come. We read in Luke's Gospel, some of the Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, the Lord replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Keep quiet when there is so much about the Lord to shout about? And us keep quiet about the Lord on Palm Sunday or any other day? I don't think so. We make a joyful noise to the Lord. Our shout can be the word Hosanna, which means, Lord, save us. Lord, bless us. Lord, grant us success. Hosanna becomes a word for praising God. Hosanna, praise God. This day, in the events leading up to the cross and the empty tomb, is called Palm Sunday. And it's John's Gospel that tells us about the palm branches. The next day, the great crowd that had come from the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. I'm reading from John chapter 12. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Kids' Church is on a term break. Kids' Church will be back on Sunday, May the 1st. So here is the kids' spot for today, for Palm Sunday, and we can all join in. I want us to practice shouting, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Hosanna, yay, Jesus. And I want you on the count of three to shout that back at me, and you at home too. Hosanna, yay, Jesus. One, two, three. All right, twice as loud and we'll be somewhere near what it must have been like on that first Palm Sunday. Hosanna, yay Jesus. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Now I want you to say it again, waving your arms like palm branches. Okay, you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Hosanna, yay Jesus. You're getting better every time. We're going to start with a kid's song. It's a happy song about the Lord who is our friend forever. And you can stand up and do the actions or you can remain seated and do the actions. It's up to you how you join in. So here we go. Ten minutes with the kids in Kid Spot. <laughs>
it is? Time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Ollie and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. I went to a big ball game with my big brother. It was at a ginormous stadium. There were so many people. And do you know what goes together with the big ball game? Big food! We got to sit really close to the field and I could see all the players. At the end, the ball came right towards me, and I caught it. And do you know what goes together with the ball? A bat! I can't wait to hit this ball high into the sky with my bat. And the coolest thing we did at the game was wave these huge foam fingers in the air and cheer. Cheering goes with baseball, too. Go, team, go! Go, team, go! Go, team, go! Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Manny! Who? Who? Cheering at a ball game, were you? Hi, Ollie! It was so cool! Everyone was cheering together! A cheering crowd is fun! It's true! I know another crowd that was cheering, too! Listen to this story! Just follow me through! Who? Follow me through, follow me through, through. I've got a Bible story for me and you. Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Oh, hi friends! I'm Justin the Mailman. I was just practicing my cheer. After I deliver this mail, I'm going to a baseball game, and I want to be ready to cheer for the team. Go team! All this cheering reminds me of a story. Do you want to hear it? Great. Let me just put the story mail in the mailbox. Today's true story from the Bible is the story of Palm Sunday. It begins in the city of Jerusalem. All of the people were walking around town. Then someone said, Jesus is coming! The people were so surprised and so excited. They had heard that Jesus was a good friend and had done amazing things. He made a storm stop just by saying, stop. They had heard that Jesus made sick people better and that he could feed a whole group of people with only a little bit of food. Wow, Jesus really can do amazing things. He is a very special friend. And if Jesus was coming, then they needed to do something special to celebrate him. So some of the people got palm branches and some of them took off their coats and laid them down to make a special path for Jesus. And then they saw him. He was here. They waved their palm branches. Let's wave our hands like palm branches. Great job. And then the people shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Can you say that? Try it. Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Let's say it again. Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. The people were celebrating Jesus because they knew he was special. Everyone was so excited for Jesus to be there. Moms, dads, grandparents, teachers, and children. They were celebrating Jesus. Let's cheer for him too. One more time, wave your branches and say, Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Jesus is such a special friend and Jesus wants to be your friend forever. 
Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who wants to be your friend forever? Jesus wants to be my friend forever. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who wants to be your friend forever? Jesus wants to be my friend forever. That's the truth, friends. Happy Palm Sunday. So there's your story, and it's all true. The people cheered for Jesus, and we can cheer for him too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, all the people laid palm branches and cheered for Jesus. They had heard he was a good friend and did amazing things. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did say, got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Cheering and baseball go together. But the best things that go together are my friend Jesus and me. Hosanna! Hosanna! Yay, Jesus! Hosanna! Hosanna! I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. Oh, Heavenly Father, we would pray for our troubled world where there's so much trouble and discord. Oh, Father God, a world where millions are being displaced from their homes and many innocent lives are being lost and families are being separated one from another. Heavenly Father, we pray in particular for Ukraine, especially those in the eastern and southern regions who are seeking to escape newly intended attacks by them, by Russian forces. We pray for their safety as mothers, children and older men seek refuge and safety towards the north and the west. May the rail system continue to serve their needs. We do so pray for peace and for end to this evil. May justice reign in this world of ours. We pray not only for the Ukrainian people, but also for the Roman soldiers sucked into the conflict by misinformation and black lies. Many of these also are victims of evil machinations by the Russian state. We pray in particular for Wayne, Olya, Zech and their family, that they may be kept safe and their lives preserved to continue to serve you, Father in that ministry, in that war-torn country. Heavenly Father, we pray for our fellow Chinese and Iranian congregation as they worship and that they may be blessed by today's ministry of the word. We pray for all of those who use our property. We thank you that we can serve you through their activity and ministry. We, Father God, give thanks for all your blessings upon us. Father, as we will soon come to celebrate Easter and all that means, we pray that our faith will be strengthened as we reflect on Jesus, our Lord and Saviour's saving work and ministry. O oh Lord, give us all a renewed sense of ministry as we reflect on our Lord's saving work in this season of reflection. We know, Father, that we can do little in our own strength, but with your Holy Spirit's enabling, we can be enlivened to embrace ministry with and without this church. 
Father, we pray that persons will be raised up for service within our church. Raise up persons, Lord, to fill in committee vacancies, to discover opportunities for service with youth and children. We pray that we may be enabled to strengthen and be strengthened by the study of the word in groups and service in outreach and social service. Lord, we would embrace the whole gospel. We are mindful that Paul was given only one writing and instruction when he began ministry to the Gentiles, that, that being not to forget the poor. We are mindful that our Lord likewise in his preaching called us to ministry and to service and in the material sense and to the poor in spirit in the spiritual sense. Oh Lord, help us to meet need. We pray for all those who lead and serve us within this church, that they will not become weary of well-doing, but be encouraged in their service. We pray for the orchards, nursing home residents, that their need for spiritual and material concerns will be met. We pray for the chaplaincy team that serves our residents, both in the nursing home and the independent units. We pray for those who are on the front line with COVID and seek to control this affliction. Finally, Lord, we ask for a blessing on all present that we are encouraged in our faith as we worship together. May God bless us. Amen. Please be upstanding and join us as we continue to worship with the new song that we learnt last week called The Passion. Was 
slain. He is risen. I give my whole life to honor this love. By the Lamb who was slain, I'm forgiven. The sinner's Savior, crown him forever. For the Lamb who was slain, he is risen. I give my whole life to honor this love. By the Lamb who was slain, I'm forgiven. The sinner's Savior, crown him forever. For the Lamb who was slain, he is risen. Our chains are gone, our dead is clean, the cross has overcome the grave. Oh, Jesus' blood that sets us free means death to death. And life for me means death to death, and life for me. Please be seated. Well, there's a youth session on this morning. And uh, the Lord bless our young folk as they have time together and continue to think about uh, the meaning of Palm Sunday and the details of that first Palm Sunday. And uh, for our children, whilst Kids Church is in recess, uh, we have activity sheets for them. They're there by the uh, sound desk and uh, at kids' height because they're on the floor and they can easily uh, get them in a, a packet of uh, pencils and textures as well. We read in Luke's Gospel about that first Palm Sunday from Luke 19 and 37. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. The followers of Jesus praised God because they each have their own story of what they have heard Jesus say and seen Jesus do. So far, up to this point in his ministry, and this note of joyful praise connected to Jesus runs right through the Gospels from the very beginning of his public ministry. There's been this response of joyful praise. The man paralysed who cannot walk, his friends make a hole in the roof of the house where Jesus is and they lower him down so that he's right there in front of Jesus. And the Lord says, your sins are forgiven. And then the Lord says, you can walk, get up and walk. And the man does so. He rolls up his mat and he walks out of that house praising God. And we read that everyone that was in the house, that crowded house, they were amazed and they praised God also, joyful praise. They're filled with awe and they say, we have seen remarkable things today. Think of the ten lepers. On your way, the Lord says, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they go, they are healed. And there's one who comes back, the other nine keep going. But one comes back to the Lord and he's a Samaritan. And he throws himself at the feet of Jesus in shouting praise, in joyful praise. And then, remember Bartimaeus. 
when the Lord gives him his sight. He follows the Lord and we read that as they continue on to Jerusalem, there he is in the crowd praising God for the gift of his sight. So it's no surprise really that that when Jesus makes his claim to kingship, to be God's chosen king for his people, it's no surprise that there is this spontaneous outburst, this joyful outburst of praise. The people are celebrating because they know that in the person of Jesus, God is with them and that to bless and that his blessings give life. And for the same reason as the crowd praised God on this first Palm Sunday, we also praise God on this Palm Sunday in the year of our Lord 2022. We see what the Lord has done as recorded in the Gospels and we are filled with joyful praise. We also acknowledge what the Lord means to us. We each have our many experiences of the Lord's goodness and his faithfulness in the trials of life, his many blessings, one after the other, and these blessings sustain us. We each have our stories of Answers to prayer. This is Nita coming up on screen. Now when Nita was a girl, she was born to her mum when mum was 17. And mum's man in her life was no good for Nita. Her childhood was far from normal. It was so difficult that every night she would pray to God. And she says, and her story is in the Eternity uh, website, and that's a weekly email uh, with all the latest news uh, in Christian circles. And Nita writes, there was never any mention of God in our home. But I prayed to God every single night. And I asked God to fix the situation. This is a 10-year-old girl. I asked him to stop my mother having breakdowns and to stop my stepfather doing what he was doing. Well, a friend of her mother finds out that things are not good for Nita. And so Nita enters into foster care. Her story again. My foster mother brought me a Bible and I started going to church with them. They sent me to a Christian school. I remember asking her, how could I be a Christian? And she explained that I could just pray to Jesus and ask him to be the boss of my life. I went outside and I lay in the hammock in their backyard. There were trees everywhere. I prayed to Jesus and I can honestly tell you that it was like my whole world turned from black and white to colour. In an instant, it was the strangest feeling. I could suddenly see the beauty of God's creation everywhere. I could see his hand at work. All that time as a little girl, I'd been praying to God to fix the situation in my family and he fixed it by taking me completely out of there. Now, it took some time, but over time, Nita's prayer was wonderfully answered and now Nita is well married with children of her own and Nita has been a teacher in the Christian school she went to when she was 13 years old, commencing foster care. Nita's been a teacher in that school for over 20 years. You know, it's experiences like that that make Palm Sunday an occasion for personal, heartfelt and joyful praise. We celebrate today what we read in John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. In the Lord is life, 
and that he is the light for all mankind. His light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. We celebrate what the Lord says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, that he has come that we may have life and have it to the full. We celebrate that in listening to the Lord and doing what he says, we are like the wise man who built his house on rock rather than the foolish man who built his house on sand. We celebrate that the Lord is our shepherd and so we shall not want. We celebrate that with numberless blessings, each moment he crowns. Now, while the crowd are celebrating on that first Palm Sunday, making a joyful noise about the Lord, what is the Lord up to? What's he actually doing? He's entering the city, riding on a donkey. He's fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy of Zechariah. And Matthew's Gospel quotes Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. What is the Lord up to? The Lord is presenting himself as the king God has, uh, has promised, the king that will come to rule God's people. And Jesus is welcomed with acclaim, but not by everyone. We read in Luke's Gospel that alongside the adulation of the crowd, the Lord knows that his kingship is rejected by most, and he weeps for the city on this Palm Sunday account in Luke's Gospel. And he says, if you, even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. As we commemorate the Lord's entry into the city, it is with profound admiration for the Lord because we know he is aware that he will suffer much and be put to death by the authorities. If Vladimir Putin was ever to come into the city of Kiev, the capital of the Ukraine, to rule as king. It would not be as a liberator, but as an oppressor. But here, the Lord's claim to kingship is as a liberator. Under his rule, there is freedom. Freedom from the addiction to sin that robs us of life. Freedom to be the best people we can be, helped by the Spirit of God, to be more and more like Jesus in personality and character. And we celebrate this freedom that we have in the Lord who comes to the world with all the blessings of heaven. We celebrate this side of the cross. We celebrate this side of the resurrection of Jesus, God's salvation, as we read in Isaiah, and let's read it all together out aloud. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We celebrate today that we who are sinners can be forgiven and be born again to receive and to live new life, life that not even our sinfulness and death can trample. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the greatest news ever. So today, we cannot be quiet. We make our joyful noise to the Lord and we speak for him to our community. Today, people in our community reject the Lord. He is irrelevant. They do not recognise in him that there is peace with God. Some will tell us to be quiet when we tell them about the Lord. But we can't be quiet. We must not be quiet. There are those who will listen. There are those searching. There are those waiting to be saved. Let us be prepared to share our hope in the Lord and what we know about him to everyone who will listen.
cross over is the Baptist agency that helps Baptist churches to tell their community about the Lord. And it is Crossover who gives us this headline for this Easter, that the greatest news ever is the cross of Jesus and his gift of new and eternal life. And our offering in the Good Friday service is given to Crossover to help finance the uh, work of Crossover in equipping Baptist churches to reach their community for the Lord. So here's a message from Andrew Turner, the leader of Crossover. <laughs> long, long ago, on a mountain in Galilee, Jesus came to his followers and said to them, go and make disciples of all nations. All through the ages, Christians have kept their commitment to Jesus and spread his life-changing message in the only way they knew how. Catholicism, through commitment to tradition. Pentecostals, through faith and miracles. And Baptists, through not dancing. According to the latest Australian census, the Australian population increased by just over 2 million people between 1996 and 2006. Over this period, the number of people with no religious affiliation increased by 26%, and the number of people reporting a non-Christian religion increased by 79%, while the number of Christians grew by only 0.8%, and now account for just 64% of the total population. As people with such good news to share, we seem to be having some sort of difficulty. And this is why Crossover exists. Crossover is passionately committed to serving the church in its mission, helping Christians to share the message of faith in ways that connect with people today. Our society has changed, and for the growing number of people with a non-Christian background, or no religious background at all, the traditional church experience can be a bewildering one. Our old methods of evangelism don't necessarily work for everyone. And of course, some churches are just struggling with limited resources. This is where Crossover comes in, with ideas and resources for Christians who are keen to share their faith with family and friends and are looking for new and creative ways to go about it. Like a mirror, Crossover conducts research into trends in how people think and relate in the 21st century and reflects back to the church how we are doing and what we might do better. Like a table, they bring together specialists and strategic missional thinkers to spark new ideas for reaching our nation. Like a toolbox, Crossover explores new forms of communicating the gospel they produce and promote user-friendly resources and initiatives that provoke spiritual exploration and enable gospel sharing dialogue. And like a broker, Crossover matches the best of these evangelistic tools, ideas and resources with churches and their leaders around the country. Crossover is passionate about exploring real, relevant and local ways to make Jesus known. But the reality is that Crossover cannot exist without people like you making a contribution to fund its work. We invite you to partner with us so that we may see many more lives encounter the truth of Jesus and experience the hope and healing we have in Him. Please be generous in your donation to the Good Friday offering this year. We really value your help. Crossover helping churches do ministry beyond the walls. Okay. So, uh, for most... Oh, the worship team can come up as I speak. The um, simplest way is uh, to bring a, a gift and put it in the offering bowl on Good Friday... Uh, some of you like to direct give and you can go to the Crossover website 
<coughs> crossover.org.au and give that way. But let's get behind Crossover and uh, support this effort for uh, our Baptist churches to reach their community for the Lord. Um, before Matt leads us in our hymn for this Palm Sunday, I'd like to pray. Heavenly Father, we're getting caught up in the season. It's Easter. And we pray for the help of your spirit to celebrate the amazing outcomes of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. <clears throat> and we recognise on this day when people just could not keep quiet about their joy in Jesus, we recognise that our generation of believers must echo their joyful praise and we must point others to the Lord. We cannot be quiet. So we continue to pray that you will help us, that you'll give us opportunities. We know in some parts of the world there's no difficulty having a conversation about faith. But here in our community, Lord, we need your help. Give us opportunities. And then help us to explain the hope that we have. Lord, we've been looking at answers to predictable questions. Help us to be prepared to address this um, requirement of us. To not be stuck for words, but, but to have an answer for the hope that we have. Use us, Lord. And may we see through the opportunities you give us. May we see people saved and added. People who want to be baptised. People who are excited about joining us as members of this local church. This is our dream. This is our longing. This is our future as we wait on you in prayer and you respond with your blessings. And that's our prayer this Palm Sunday. And we do pray in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. Please be upstanding and join us as we sing this last hymn. All glory, Lord and honour.
Yes, be seated, please. Thank you, singers and musicians. By way of news, uh, Glenda continues in care and uh, the Thompson family uh, value our prayer support for them at this time. So far as Wayne and Olya are concerned, they're in the Ukraine. They are safe. Um, they are continuing their leadership and uh, in relief work and in pointing folk to turn to the Lord for his blessings and his help. They expect things to get worse. For us, we're in a different scene, aren't we? And we have a combined lunch today in the youth hall and uh, you're very welcome to come to that lunch which has been organised by our elders and uh, a team made up of folk from each congregation to enable the Mandarin folk to be part of it and then to stay on for their 2.30 service. Uh, lunch will be served about noon downstairs. You will notice the scenes of Easter uh, as we read it in the Gospels around the sides of the auditorium. And our thanks does go out to Ina and Manic and Ian and Miriam and Peter Lee, anyone else who helped them set up these scenes. And you are very welcome to come during this week, Monday through Thursday, say from 9am till 9pm for private reflection, contemplation, uh, prompted by uh, these scenes. And uh, you start at the, uh, at the back there and then you go what would be clockwise around the sides of the auditorium. And those who are watching, if you're close to Templestow here, uh, please uh, j come. If you find the front door doesn't open, just go down to the car park and come up that way. Um, the uh, scenes of Easter here, these reflections are open to the public from 5 till 9, 5 p.m. till 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And we'll have folk here on duty for those evening uh, sessions. So let us make the most of this Easter week and have that refreshment of, of uh, heart and mind of spirit uh, through uh, giving time to meditation, to remembering uh, the Easter story uh, and all that the Lord endured uh, for us. Uh, Good Friday is a 9.30 service here and then on Easter, Easter Sunday, 10 a.m., there are invitations available on the table in the foyer uh, that you can take and give to people, give to friends, inviting them to those services. And there's a separate invitation for the reflections that you can give to friends as well. Printed answers to the predictable questions that people uh, will ask us when they know we are Christians, those printed answers are on the table in the foyer if that would help you in your preparation so that you know what to say when the opportunity comes. And um, we're helping people uh, to get their safe church training done. And a first step is to do an online module. And uh, to help folk who have found it hard to do that, um, Saturday, April 23, meeting here from 10 a.m., we will take folk through that first module. We want to make it as easy as possible for everyone who needs it to have this safe church training. Now with Easter coming up, those who uh, need to jump over this uh, first step and get that online module training, if you can register before Easter because it's the Saturday after Easter that we will have 
that Saturday morning session. So you can register with Karen or with Jenny in the office. And if you know that you're needing to do this Safe Church training, uh, please respond and if you possibly can, make it on Saturday the 23rd. Well, I think that's it. And our Palm Sunday service uh, is coming to a close. And the way we'll wrap it up is by saying together, uh, as a last word, what we read in Psalm 118, where we find uh, reference to the word Hosanna. Except we won't say Hosanna, we'll say what Hosanna means in this last word. So remain seated by all means and let's read it out aloud together as our finishing statement. Together, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay. Bye for now. Bye to you at home.